today, we are busting out some very advanced technology to see what our audience is thinking. So let's take a look. Oh, this uh -oh. woman is wondering, where was Michael when the final hair fell out? Oh. I have a feeling you wrote these clips. I did not. Uh, let's see, let's fire up that camera again. Uh, oh, he's thinking, did my cat judge me for eating that entire carton of ice cream? <laughs> <laughs> no, yes, that cat, cat did not. <laughs> Today is all about you guys and answering your burning questions, so get ready for an exciting hour of viewer Q&A Spring Edition. Yeah. All right, so... You've heard us talk about hashtag you on the chew, and since today is all about you guys, we wanted to taste some of the delicious creations you sent to us oh. with that hashtag you on the chew. First up, this is a ham, asparagus, and goat cheese tart, the recipe for which was sent to wow. us by Sarah B. There's Sarah. Thank you, Sarah. It's got uh, asparagus, onion, garlic, ham, thyme, and goat cheese. That looks delightful. Oh, good. We're going to split. You got a quarter I think it looks like a, like a quiche. Mm-hmm. And? Clinton, let me tell you how the ham tastes. Mm. It tastes like pig. It's, a, <laughs> mm. it's, oh, it's, it's really, yeah, it's really nice. Very good. Wow. It's delicious. It's good. And here we have, no, no, thank you. Here we have zoodles uh, with sausage, favas, mint, and ricotta cheese. And that was sent by Julie H. There's Julie with a picture of something that looks delicious Hi, in her Julie. hand. That's got Italian sausage, garlic, lemon, zucchini, noodles, fava beans, mint, ricotta, and ricotta salata. Ooh. Ooh that looks good. Everybody's into the, the zoodles now. Praise is real, Clinton. It's real. They have the pre-made zoodles now in the supermarket. Pre-made? Yeah, you can get them cut already. Like, you don't have to have the zoodle slicer anymore. You can just oh, go cool. buy the zoodles. I like that. Yeah. Mm. yeah. This is delicious. It works, too. Good. Two viewers on fire. Mm -hmm. Two viewers on fire. Thank you for sharing with us. We're going to send you both our Chew-approved book. So keep letting us know what you're cooking with the hashtag you on the Chew. You just might see it on the show someday. Okay, so... Is the new spring fashion trend food-related apparel? Okay, I'm going to ask. I ask you this because there is a Olivia. costume designer named Olivia Mears, and the first thing that she created was the Taco Bell dress, B-E-L-L-E, -L -L -E, like Bell from Beauty and the Beast. We ate that. We did. We had a taco pizza that looked that just looked like just that. Like right? that. <laughs> well, now she has created the pizza dress, which I believe is just going to take off like wildfire. There we go. And then when she lies down in it, I think there's a great photo coming up. Oh, look at that. She's in the pizza. She's a large pepperoni. <laughs> it might help that she's very beautiful. <laughs> yes. Those dresses look fantastic. I think they might look differently on me. <laughs> Still, I'd like to see you in one. I'm saying you would. I'm saying you look kind of hot in a pizza I, dress. I think so too. But I think Mario Batali. I think a pizza dress. Yeah. <laughs> I'm always amazed at how light on your feet you are. Nimble. Not light in the loafers, <laughs> but light, <laughs> light on the feet. I got dancing blood in me, Clinton. <laughs> dancing blood. Well, our producers cross. thought it would be fun to see what we look like oh, sporting our favorite food accessories. Of course they did. So, of course they did. This is not going to end well. I hope they put you in the pizza. Oh, well, I'd be happy to. All right, well, let's see what they did. First up is, there's Michael in a bacon tie. <laughs> that actually, that works. That I like works. it. I like it because I could wear it and then eat it for lunch. <laughs> I think you could sell those. That'd be <laughs> yeah. smart. All right, let's see who's up next. Uh, that looks like me in lettuce cup shoes. Oh, that is hilarious. You know, I love a lettuce cup. <laughs> I love a lettuce cup. Okay, who's up next? <laughs> oh, Carl is wearing a... It looks like a pie or a tart jumpsuit. I love a mixed print. Love a mixed print. It's a pie pants suit. I know, right? Uh, well, I guess that leaves you. Oh, Mario. I can only imagine oh. they saved the best for the funnest. Let's say that's a pasta wig. Do you like it? Would you wear it? I would. Of course, I'd this wear it. This looks like you in 1995. Exactly. That's <laughs> me in college with less sauce. Less sauce. I like it. 
Uh, because today is all about answering our viewers' questions, we better hop to it. So let's see how many we can get to in 60 seconds. Ready and go. Yeah. All right. Ashley T says, if you could only have three spices in your pantry, which one would you choose, Carla Hall? Um, I would have cumin. I would have a little uh, curry. It's a blend. And I would have uh, black pepper. Uh. Okay. Uh, Renee R says, with all the different olive oils on the market, how do you know which one is best for cooking and which one is best for topping foods? Mary. I would say you find one in the $7 to $10 range for cooking and something in the $15 to $20 range for finishing. Try to get extra virgin olive oils. Try to get them from a specific place in Italy. Okay. Michelle N., you always say to bring meat to room temp before cooking to maximize tenderness. Does that also go for chicken? You want to take um, Yeah, I do it with all proteins except fish. And it's not to maximize tenderness. It's to maximize that the meat cooks evenly. Okay. L&T, what is one place you've traveled to that has truly impacted your style of cooking? Um, I would say that would be Paris. That's when I started hanging out in the kitchen, and there were a bunch of Southerners there. And um, and, I, and I think that's when... No, I mean, that's... Southern France or Southern United States? They were from the Southern United States, but that's what actually made me excited about cooking, so I started doing all kinds of genres. Because you saw it from their perspective. Yeah. I like it. We didn't get to too many of them. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. There are eight more on my card, which we're going to answer on social media. Okay. I feel like we've got a great show coming up today. What do you have coming up? Mike, I want to start. It is Monday, which means it's Mystery Monday. And this time, I am in the hot seat. We'll check out the surprise location where the producer sent me. Yeah. And it's also request a recipe week. So I'm going to make a really delicious salmon burger, personally requested by, you guessed it, one of our at-home viewers with our Chew Crew Test Kitchen. Yeah. We're joined by one of America's favorite actresses. She's an Oscar nominee who's back on the big screen with a sumptuous new film, Paris Can Wait. Please welcome the spectacular Diane Lane. Talented Diane Lane. So, in honor of your most recent film, we're going to drink a little rosé. And I would like to Salted. point out May we? <laughs> that we are so in France while we do this. Eyes and then sip, sorry. Yes, yes. Mm -hmm. Behind us, oh, that works. We, are, we are in the countryside. Oh my gosh. And one, it's wow. a beautiful rosé from the Provence. And then right over there is Paris. Yeah, yeah. Just oh, that blocks works. away, of course. Hey! Recognize that? I didn't really look around. This is fantastic. Okay. Yes. Oh, so I'm now you happy. grew up in New York City. I did. And native New Yorker. Were you a cooking family or an <laughs> order out <laughs> family? That's the answer. Big day eleven. Uh, well, no is a complete sentence, but that's not very interesting. I would say spam and Chef Boyardee, and that's all you need to really spam? know. Spam? Really? Yeah. Well, I was the... Are you Hawaiian? <laughs> no. I was the cook. I was. I remember trying to feed my dad when he right? came home, but he was a cab driver during that time. Right. And it was fun to try because I was a latchkey kid for a chunk of time. And right. So when he'd come home, I'd try to impress him. And I did make a tuna casserole once from a recipe that involved crumbling up uh, potato chips. Potato chips. Nice. That was a kid thing. Yeah. But you know, you got moves. You got culinary <laughs> moves. I was the single digit old the right? last time I really right. attempted it. <laughs> right. Eating element. It so was... now, when you go to parties, I mean, do you entertain? <laughs> you don't entertain. Um, do you have I, caterers? I, that's why I drink wine. I find myself very amusing when I drink. Wine. <laughs> okay. Entertaining, right? Well, I'm sure we'll find you amusing too. Okay. I mean, we already think you're brilliant, amusing and brilliant anyway. So, like, <laughs> if if you go to a party. Do you bring a dish or do you bring skills? What do you bring besides your joie de vivre? I'm a chopper. A I, chopper? I don't. Yeah, a stirrer, a chopper. Um, so what if you come to my house and dinner's just about ready? Will oh, well, I prefer to drinks? clean. I volunteer oh. to all. I, that's what I recommend when you don't have confidence in the kitchen. Say, I'm going to do a cleanup because nobody directs you. Nobody right? wants to help you. Yeah. Nobody's telling you how to do it better. They're afraid they're going to get recruited. Yeah. Right. So they're right. just like, fine, you do that. We'll that's be right. in the kitchen having dessert. Well, I like, you know, if, I'm in, anyway. if I'm in somebody's house, I often say, if they won't let me do anything, I generally jump in to clean at the end. Because for me, one of the most important things to do while you're sitting at the end of dinner, not to jump up and get moving on with the cleanup. I like everyone to sit there as long as they can. But then when it is time to do cleanup, I'd rather clean up than kibitz with people maybe I don't recognize, know, or that care about. Tricky. Do you, yeah. Speaking of cleaning up, do you still clean your shoes in the dishwasher? Of course I do. Oh! 
They're made of plastic. Fantastic. Do you do that with yours? Um, they might disintegrate. Yeah, they might exactly. disintegrate. Exactly. So what do you say? We're going to make a dish today I that is based a little bit about your movie. Now, first of all, tell me a little bit about your movie because we're going to make something called poulet. Uh, blanquette de poulet. Mais oui. Mais oh oui, God. mon petit. Um, you know, it starts out... Well, I think of everything as a cheese delivery system, frankly. I mean, I looked at your earlier that. food today and I thought, oh, bacon, cheese, I'm in. Um, I, I, it starts out with cheese and wine, and right. that's the gateway drug, really. Right. Because then you are off to the races with all of French cuisine, mm. which only gets better from there in terms of the sauces and right. knowing how to marinade and all these fancy words that I'm... But you're doing oh, really well at. So I, was, I took over I the onions like because, well, you're doing good. You're doing good. So tell us this movie now. Tell us the premise. You meet. You're, you start in Cannes, France. Yes. And then what do you do? Well, it's a road trip that she didn't intend to take. Right. She got feeling unwell before her flight, so she. Your husband in this case is Alec Baldwin. Alec Baldwin. Right. The very attentive husband, <laughs> Alec Baldwin. So he allows me to be driven by his business associate, which is supposed to be a seven hour ride. And? It, we got distracted by all the culinary opportunities along the way. So how long does a seven hour ride end up taking? our way to Paris. Well, how long does it take? Well, it's about two and a half days we've milked that. <laughs> uh -huh. Yeah, yeah, he got and, and your husband is none the wiser for this, or it turns out he's a bit of a... Well, he gets a little awakened by the fact that she's becoming awakened by the uh, bon vivant opportunities right. of... Uh, Fine cuisine. I always think that cuisine is the access point of culture, and the fun part about a road trip is that you wind up surrendering your control and you allow some spontaneity in. Mm. And in this case, I'm guided by a native who right. knows the area and wants to impart and enlighten. Love uh, that. Which is the best. When you can so there are beautiful shots where every time we have a glass of wine or something to eat, the food is food pornographified. Every <laughs> drip of wine you is like, oh, is this true. is so promising. It's yes. so much that I want. Yes. Why don't you dump these mushrooms in? So your husband doesn't care that you're two and a half days late for the trip? Well, he gets a little concerned, but not in time to be... To stop well, the situation. Yeah. I mean, we always want to leave room for a sequel, right? Right. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so here we have the French dish. We've started with some green, our spring onions. We have mushrooms. You're going to dash some wine in there. Oh. Is that wine. Dash? We call it deglaze, so I put in about a glass. A little bit more. All right, this is great. great for your skin. Right, this is like the <laughs> Venice facial, right? So we've got that in there. I sprinkled a little bit of salt. We're going to do a little bit of pepper. Mm. And what we're doing is we're creating kind of a braise. I brown these pieces by seasoning them, both breast meat and thigh meat. What do you use to braise? A brush? Uh, no, no, braise, a braise is the cooking in the liquid oh. that doesn't completely cover it. That's so a I have that wine. I thought it was a noun. <laughs> well, it can be. The braise refers to the dish. Okay. You want to add the cream? Ah, I know what cream Just is. Just a couple tablespoons of cream, all of it, all of it. Pre-measured. Right, pre-measured. And then what we do is we put this all back in. We bring it wow. up to a boil. We lower the heat ah. to a simmer. And then when we come back, I'm going to show you something called beurre monnier. Ah. Mais oui, mon petit Kai. Uh, butter, butter. That's right. More with money. Diane Lane when we come back. Don't go away. <laughs> yeah. Welcome back. That was our guest, Diane Lane, and her delicious new film, Paris Can Wait. Of course, if I was your husband, I would let you go on a long road trip with a guy like that. <laughs> right? Well, it wasn't intended to be long. It was intended right. to be brief. Just a quick drive. Yes. All right, so this is the bear manier that we were referring to, which means um, uh, massaged butter. I like and that. And what we're going to do is we're going to take equal parts butter and flour, very much like you would a roux, and you just whisk them or mush them together. I can mush. All right, you're going to mush. Actually, you know what? You're going to start whisking. Oh, whisk. Because this is how we're going to thicken up this kind of light stew. So as I toss it in like that, now whisk furiously. Oh. That. Mm, uh, more, like this, more like this. No, like this. Oh, I'm go. thinking yeah. of. Yeah, we're not whipping cream, uh, right? So we add just a little bit, and you keep an eye on it because you want it to thicken, but you don't want it to become too thick. Okay. And I think keep it. that your whisking is fantastic. I'll take it. It's, All right. It's a verb. So now we stir. <laughs> we stir that in, right? Now we're going to add everything else. Okay. Can you chop some tarragon? Yes. Fantastic. I'm going to throw in the tops of those onions. How fine do you want it? As fine as you want to make it because we are rustique in, in, uh, in, the, in, the, in the countryside of France. So I've had some blanched peas. And some fava beans. The center ones are more chopped. Right, there Good you chopper. Go. I know. So let's go like that. All of it? And like that. No, this is perfect. Okay. 
And we're going to take just a little bit of lemon juice. Now, the director of this movie was Eleanor Coppola. Yes. Now, you have a story or a history with them, of course. Well, first of all, I know Eleanor since I was 17 years old, making The Outsiders and Rumblefish. Yeah. Her yeah. wonderful husband, Francis Ford Coppola. I made four films for him over the years. But I knew her sort of as the mother in the background. She was the mother of Sophia, who played my sister. I think she was eight years old in right. Rumblefish. Tells you, it was a little while ago. But um, it was always food-centric. Francis would cook in his trailer right. on set, and he would cook pasta for everybody. And that was how we did it. And up, up in Napa Valley, we'd go for ADR, uh, additional dialogue recording, right. because everything needs improvement, including films. So right. there's a post-production process. It was all about food. Right. We would eat. We would eat. We would make gnocchi. And if you can make gnocchi, is one of my favorite things to do. Off the board, flick them off the board, or off the fork, right. or just roll them like that. See, right? I can't hurt myself with a with a knife with gnocchi. It's a right. Good. Ah, <laughs> safe, safe, safe. With all let's, hands. Let's take a taste. <gasps> this one. Yeah, ready? Mmm. It's hot. Hot. Mmm. -hmm. <laughs> I like it hot. Mmm. Yum. 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 Mm. And here's some mm. crusty bread. Mm-hmm. Crusty bread, a glass of rosé. I'm in. I think we're feeling like we're all going to see this bread. <laughs> Before you go, we want to give you a little gift to remember us by. Being that we know that you love to wash dishes every now and then. Oh, my then, gosh. We're giving you a fantastic party <laughs> gift so you can show off your skills at your next party. Thank you. It's Diane's doing dishes with the fantastic gloves and some soap. Because I am so handy to have around. <laughs> Thank you so much for coming. Thank you for Congratulations coming. Congratulations on this movie. Oh, so Everyone sweet. should Thank see... You. Paris can wait in theaters That's everywhere funny. this Friday. It's Michael's turn for a mysterious Monday when we come back. Don't go away. Hey, everybody, welcome back to the two now. It's time for another installment of Mystery Mondays in May. But this time I was in the hot seat and things got fired up. So take a look. Ooh. <laughs> Guys, it's time for my Mystery Monday. Going to an undisclosed location. I'm a little nervous. Knowing that Clinton pushed it to that level to get a tattoo, it's making me a tad nervous, I'm not gonna lie. We're going further and further from my home as opposed to closer to my home, which makes me nervous. Hey, Michael, welcome. How are you? Nice to well, see you. Need to change, give you the uniform. Okay, follow me, please. Simon walked through the door. It was insane. This is exciting. Is she gonna cook for me? It's the best day of my life. How are you? Good. Nice to see you. Nice to see you. <laughs> Seeing him with the hat and the hachi it was like, wait a minute, he's cooking? <laughs> I have never done this before. I've been on that side. <laughs> These guys not only have to be great cooks and chefs, they have to be great entertainers too. First, you have to do like a little bit show. Yeah. This is like Kung Fu Panda style. Don't hit them. <laughs> That was a little struggle to start. <laughs> oh, it's a little, uh, I don't know. Is this going to be a dangerous about you lunch? But, Michael did um, his best. He did really well, yeah. though, as he, as he went on. Oh, they are hungry. Are you ready to feed them? Well, yeah, get on All it. All right, nice. You have to do the fire. You have to light it up. Yeah. It's um, very warm. I thought it was going to burn my eyebrows off. Yeah. <laughs> We have to play egg for the fried rice. First, you have to spin the egg, and then you have to flip it very quick. Up. Uh, yeah. When it came to the egg and hat, it looked so easy. And then when Michael Pop did it, it, up. it was like, break, break, break. At first, I'm like, oh, he has this. He's a chef. He's a professional. He could do it. He made me a little nervous with the egg. When he got that egg in that hat, it was like, wow. It may have cracked just a little bit. That egg is gonna leak. Oh, I knew it was cracked the minute it went in there. <laughs> the show's about to get good. <laughs> Onion tower, no problem. I mean, I use my hands, you know, they use the tools. Opa! Who wants first? All right, my man, ready? 
Zucchini in the mouth. We were almost there. They had this great game going on. I'm playing a game with an iron chef. I'm going to go with strength in numbers. <laughs> the kitchens that I grew up in, you never threw food or made fires. So that I was allowed to throw food and make fires made it very fun for me. Nice. <laughs> this is delicious, Chef. The garlic sauce is great. The sea bass is amazing. I love that. It ended up like being a giant feast. I'm glad I didn't eat breakfast. Maybe we should do this every Monday. Nice. Nice. <laughs> Thanks for coming. I'm happy you all enjoyed everything, and I learned some nice tricks. <laughs> I'm in good shape. I would absolutely work the hibachi again. Never on a Saturday night, though. Right? Fun. That was yeah. a really fun piece. Yeah. I wish that I were there that night. You should have came. But I got to say something. I, I mean, I was under the impression that we were all going to get tattoos during these Monday mysteries. <laughs> oh, buddy. They, I mean, they didn't want to make the pieces seem redundant, but I wasn't going to let you be the only one to get a tattoo. Hibachi forever. Ever? <laughs> well, that's not the only thing they gave you. They also sent a set of hibachi teal tools Teals. to Teals. keep you in pre. Ah! <laughs> I got you, Carla. Don't worry. What's that? This is holds the knife on your belt. Oh. This is the flipper that you guys saw, and the spatch, and then a little meat fork. So it's good. It works. Good fun. But I mean, like these these kind of things. Like I, I never worked a hibachi before. You know, obviously cooking is cooking, but it was a, it was fun and inspirational. So I want to do a fun seasonal stir fry that I'm going to make today. So we're going to make like a spring style stir fry with oyster mushrooms, ramps, spring peas, rice, a little bit of chilies. I think it's going to be spectacular. So. First thing that we're gonna do, we go in the pan. Um, I'm gonna take a little bit of fresh ginger, the mushrooms and the ramps, and put those in that smoking hot pan. And here's, you know, obviously guys, we cook with these on the show often, the whole ramps, we just slice them down. Same thing, uh, whole oyster mushrooms, just julienne. Flip something. Don't worry. <laughs> we're not there yet, oh, Come on, the whole thing on your hand. Flip, flip, flip. flip, 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 flip. <laughs> Mushrooms, ramps, go with a little fresh ginger. <laughs> Stick around after the break. I'm gonna put this whole thing together. <laughs> hey everybody, welcome back to the two. Now, before the break, I tried my hand at hibachi showmanship, and now I'm making a dish inspired by my experience there, a little spring veggie fried rice. So, we already have the ramps. We have the ramps, the ginger, the mushrooms in there with that sesame oil. Now I'm gonna take my eggs and put those in the fat to start scrambling the eggs and add a little bit of chili flake because we like it spicy. And we get those eggs going like they did. And you move it, move it, move it, move it. And then you start adding some peas. You save a couple peas to play fun games with your friends. <laughs> <laughs> almost, almost, sorry. Keep it moving. I'm not quitting my day job, don't worry. <laughs> now to that, we take our rice, and we add that in there. We give it a toss. And I, you know what, I love um, all kinds of different flavors and ingredients and, and learning different kind of techniques. And fried rice, oddly enough, is something that I eat all the time. I order carry out, but I never make fried rice. You never make it? Really? No, I mean, I have, but I just don't make it often, yeah, yeah. you know? So after this heats through, three tablespoons of soy, and then I go two tablespoons of rice wine vinegar. Mm. And we give that a stir. So that gives it like the salty and some so acidity to go with the fattiness of the eggs in there. Like that. Well, the one the chef sent over that's already over on the table is delicious. Good. I mean, Thank you. I'd love to try yours too, though. Nice. <laughs> and then we go in the pan. Yeah, that's really good. Then I'm going to hit it with a little bit of fresh cilantro at the end. Oh, nice. That's it. Yes, 
<laughs> very hot. Very hot. Ooh, it's hot. Ooh, hot bites. Oh, hot. We'll take small mm -hmm. bites because we've been on TV before. Uh huh. Michael, this would be a great dish for Mother's Day. Yes. And something else Mom will love. Gives her a taste of the tropics with a summery Otterbox Symmetry Series case designed in the Caribbean. These vibrant patterns will protect from drops and bumps with what style? And everyone in our studio audience is going home with a $100 Otterbox gift card. Culinary stylist. And just a little inside scoop. We sometimes refer to you, or actually mostly all the time refer to you as Sparkles. Yes. yes. So she answers to either Jackie or Sparkle. They didn't know my name for years, but they finally know it now. So yeah, yeah well, we'll call you Sparkles because we love you. I um, prefer Sparkles. So tell fine. everybody what you do here, Jackie Sparkles. Well, I mean, we pretty much set all of this up. So we test all the recipes. We work with the host very closely, and they give us the recipes. We test them and test them and then continue to test them. And finally, they approve them, and they love them. So we go through this whole process of creating the perfect recipe for you guys. Yes, so recently I came to you and I was like, Jackie, let's test some salmon burgers. And we ate so much salmon last Ooh. week that right now we're looking at the salmon like, oh boy, I don't want any more salmon yeah, burgers. However, want. we did come up with a really perfect recipe for salmon burgers. Now, the first salmon burger we tried together was a little gummy. We didn't like the texture of that. And you had a really great solution for improving the texture of the salmon burger. Yes. So, so an amazing it. solution is um, chilling everything. So put everything in the freezer, putting your food processor in the freezer. The blade of the food processor. The blade the of the food processor, oh. the whole thing. So having everything super, super cold um, really helps to helps the texture a lot. Yeah. And what we want is we put half of it in the food processor and we leave the other half actually chopped. Right, that was that really flakiness. important. Exactly. Yes. So you want some half of the, uh, the recipe of the salmon cut up into small chunks because when you bite into a salmon burger, you want to know the salmon actually in it. But this helps. The salmon binds it because you don't add an egg to a salmon burger because right. it would make it heavy and tough. Completely. So this is actually the binder, the salmon itself. Yep. So. And this doesn't stick. When it's cold, it doesn't stick, which is great. Yeah, so what was happening when it wasn't cold, it was sort of sticking to the blade mm -hmm. and all the fats from the salmon were sort of almost congealing and it was kind of was kind of gross. Yeah. So if you freeze Good everything, texture. we're in good shape. Now, yes. after we got the texture right, we were like, mm, the flavor kind of is cool. fine, it yeah. could be better. Yeah. So why don't we explain to everybody what we did to make the flavor even better? Absolutely, yeah. So um, whenever you're working with like an oily or a fattier fish, you really want to add in some citrus and some fresh herbs. So we added in, and that's any kind of citrus you have at home. So orange, lime, we did the classic lemon and fresh dill. Yeah. So it just makes a nice pop, balance the flavors, brightens it up. Right. It just goes yeah. perfectly with salmon. I mm -hmm. mean, as you would cook a salmon for dinner, uh, we're going to add those same kind of flavors here. So yeah. we're using some lemon zest, yeah. All right. Mm -hmm. uh, we'll add some chopped scallions. Scallion and some scallions. 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 The Midwest favorite vegetable. And we're going to add in some mayo and some uh, Dijon mustard and panko, which acts as a binder, just to bring it all together. Like mayo. Yeah. Yeah. Quarter, yeah. quarter cup of mayo. So we actually had a decent amount of mayo. Yeah. The mayo, almost, because that's your egg. I mean, yeah. yeah. Right, that act does act as a binder to a certain extent. Beautiful. And a little panko we found was really nice as well because it just sort of made it a little airier. Yeah. Okay, and then we put those all together. Now, yeah. Cecilia, who asked us for advice on the salmon burger, she mm -hmm. said she wanted to grill them. So we were like, all right, awesome, let's grill them. Yeah. Don't grill them. Okay, don't grill because them. Don't grill them. it was like they were falling, it was falling through the grill. Yeah, the grill was eating more of the burger than I was eating, yeah. and I really want to eat the burger. And so it was I a think, mess, that, yeah. and it was a total mess that you had to clean up. Yes. Yeah. So. It was, I didn't have to clean it up. I, I was like, I don't, do, I don't do dishes around here. Yeah. Right, so. <laughs> Yeah. So we decided that the best way to do this <laughs> is either indoors if you've got a griddle. Yes. Or if you really want to be outside grilling with the family and maybe some people are having hamburgers where mm -hmm. you're having salmon burgers, you can put this type of griddle right on your grill. Yes. Okay. So do you want to... Solves the problem. Solves Absolutely. the problem. Or even like four layers of foil on one piece yeah, of the sure. grill and you can cook it on yes, that. Yes, directly totally on works. that. Totally yep. spray. So we literally, we just add a little olive oil and you want the heat to be super... 
just like that. You don't want to so set a fire, hot. but just like you that. It's to be pretty smoking. We're going to season our salmon, salmon burgers. burgers. And we like them, we decided that we like them pretty thin rather than a big, yeah. thick burger. I mean, it, these are a quarter pound each. Quarter pound. And that's a lot. You don't want a half a pound of salmon in your right. burger. Right, that's that's, that is kind of a that's, lot, too much. That's pretty heavy, yeah. All right, so we did a fairly thin burger, and we just had to cook it for a couple minutes on each side. So a little bit of salt on that side. Mm -hmm. Shall we put these on the old Yeah, let's grill? put them on. All right. There we go. And now that we put the salt side down, we give this side a little bit more salt. Beautiful. Well. And it was literally two minutes on the on the one side, maybe a minute and a half on the other, because you don't want it to be overcooked. Yourself. And that residual heat is just going to continue to cook it through. Yeah. So, so time it. You got the timer we got going? It. I got the timer. Got got it. It. All right. So look, that's enough time for take a quick break. So we're going to see how these salmon, bur salmon burgers turn out right after this. We'll be right back. We heard from two viewers, Cecilia, who requested a recipe for a salmon burger. And with a little bit of help from Jackie, our senior culinary stylist, we've got the ultimate recipe right here. Here's what we've already done. We made a salmon mixture, and the best tip there is when you're pureeing half of the salmon to put your food processor and the blade in the freezer and make sure the salmon is cold. Then we formed it into patties, and after adding a lot of delicious things as well, we seared it until golden brown on a griddle, which makes a big difference. So now it is time to uh, finish this off with a yes. great sauce that we, yes. brother, we came up with. I'm so excited. All right, now that is creme fraiche, which you creme can fresh. find in most grocery stores. Most grocery stores have it, yeah, yeah. absolutely. So what we're just going to do is, and you can do sour cream if we don't have it. They're already eating them. How are they? Are they delicious? They're delicious. We know that. We eat stuff. We're going to do, I mean, I want to get to eating them, obviously. We're going to do a splash of uh, After the 10 you had juice. last week? Okay, great. I'm sort of looking at this. They like, still look really good, though. Salmon. Yeah, they are good. Okay, so creme fraiche and it. lemon juice. We're going to season it with a little salt. A little salt. Where did our it. salt go? They're great. Oh, we lost now. the salt. Just kidding. Okay. <laughs> you guys just keep cooking. The salt is keep optional. Keep cooking. Okay. It's optional. All right. Fine. All right. Um, oh, the other thing that we learned yes, is me. if you've got a hard roll and oh, a salmon burger. The salmon flies into the pool. Yeah, you're no. like, <laughs> you're biting, you bite into it, the roll is too hard, so your teeth have to, yeah. it squishes the salmon right yeah. out. So oh. you need like a soft, oh, you could use oh. a little brioche uh, roll, or you could use a little, like a potato roll okay. would be nice as well. <laughs> Okay. Oh, that's wow. yeah, okay. Sparkles, as you're stirring away over there, I just wanted to say too, yeah. you're the one person in the kitchen. You've been with us since season one, since the very beginning. Ah, yes. Yeah. What do you need now? I guess I need a spatula. I have. Right, it's been quite we... a journey. There's oh, one for you. Oh, thank you. Okay. Oh, here. All right. Thank you. There you go. I was saying to Clinton, what I've learned from being here too, um, is that. You want to go on a journey with your food, and you want to go through the journey of textures. So we have our lettuce, we have our patty, which is nicely seared, and then we're going to add cucumber, which is like a really nice crunch. Yeah. So you really want to get all those different textures. Great. Right, here we go. Our seventh Do or tenth Do salmon it. burger of the week. I don't know if I could eat it. Okay. Your joints Cheers, are kiddo. Good. Thank you. Yeah. That's really good. good. <laughs> Cecilia, we hope the salmon burgers, everything you wanted, and more. Thanks for the tips, Jackie. It's always great to have you here. I'll totally help you clean up next time, I promise. If there's a recipe you'd love to see us make on the show, let us know with the hashtag request a recipe. All right, we are out of time. Thanks to Diane Lane for stopping by. Come back tomorrow. We're whipping up all of our favorite food memories with the hilarious Wanda Slice. Go to the true.com early June. Have a fabulous day, everybody.